Hi guys, it's Aoife from Words of Clover and I'm here with my February wrap up. So I actually have a dog on my lap right now, so um, excuse me if you can hear his panting uh, or if he snorts or farts or does anything during this video. Um, it's not me, it's him and uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I have two more that I read. I finished at the very start of March, so I want to include them in this wrap up because I don't want to put them into my March wrap up, which will be mainly Irish books for the Irish readathon. So the first book I finished in February was an audiobook that was The No Show by Beth O'Leary. This is the fourth yeah, the fourth book of Beth O'Leary that I've read. Um, I've read all of her books now, I think. And this is actually definitely my, my favourite Beth O'Leary because I was kind of, I didn't know whether I was going to get, I was getting on with her writing. There's a few that haven't been great for me. Um, I I liked but didn't love the flat chair. I didn't like the road trip. I liked the switch, but I really liked this one, the no-show. So in this, we follow three different women who were all stood up by the same guy on Valentine's Day. And we are kind of following the next year in their lives and their relationship with this man. We're going to see how they deal with that, his excuses. And we're also trying to figure out how he's kind of like juggling these three women at the same time. So this kind of has a lot of like John T Tucker must die feels in many ways. But there is, it's kind of like John Tucker must die with a twist. I liked the three relationships in the story. There was, there was one where you could see it definitely wasn't going to work out. There was like too many issues. But then there was two that felt like you know felt like really good solid relationships so it's very hard to see what the end goal was going to be and then I did like the fact that this book um covered mental health in a really great way kind of personal breakdowns uh from characters and we kind of see how they struggle through that we also get topics around um uh miscarriage as well and we also see a character who's really struggling with anxiety as well uh, and how you know she kind of is overcoming that bit by bit and how she's struggling with that too in her life so yeah I enjoyed this I really liked the different narrators for the characters and it took me a while to warm up to some of the characters and I did eventually this is one as well where it's very hard to see how the book where the book is going at first but then as you kind of get closer to the end of the book you're, you, it, it, you could do kind of figure out what that twist is and I did I was like okay I think this is what's going to happen and then when I like I, but I wasn't sure how it was actually going to end up I was like I think I know what's going on but I still don't know how all of this is what is actually going to happen um and then when it all kind of concluded uh it's a little bit shocking but it's still like a really good read and I did enjoy how it all ended up in the end um a little bit saccharine at times but good like this kind of these kind of books do tend to be kind of sweet and generally tend to have happy endings um so yeah I really enjoyed that so I gave this a four out of five stars I think and again it was my favorite it has been my favorite Beth O'Leary book so far so um I'm looking forward to reading the next book she comes out with and seeing if I like that one even better then I listened to another audiobook that was set Sesame Street Palestine by Daoud uh, Kutab and this is kind of what you would think it's about a journalist and tv producer in Palestine and it's about how he was uh, approached by the makers of Sesame Street that they wanted to bring in Sesame Street program in the 90s um, for the children of Palestine but they were also kind of working in tandem with people who were creating Sesame Street for the children of Israel and they were kind of trying to figure out how they could do the two um and kind of do it harmoniously but also the fact that there was this thing of maybe like you shouldn't bring politics into children's tv shows where the the narrator and the author is kind of you know he came up with all sorts of you know and um, people saying well like and he himself saying it as well with the argument of these children are growing up and living in a very very political uh like landscape in a very po political time that it's impossible not to have it, it would be very inauthentic to not have some kind of political not messaging but the p politics reflected in a way um in their tv show like don't be belittling the children in any way by by thinking that they don't know what's going on in the world around them and kind of how they brought that in in different ways and how they introduced kind of like uh israeli characters into the palestine program and vice versa and also how the the politics of palestine and israel did in many ways kind of end up getting in the way of what should have been a program about children and thinking about the children and people's politics and adult politics did get in the way of that and hampered it uh, many times i thought this was really interesting um it's obviously set in the 90s or like it it was going on in the 90s um and there are times where it's very sad to think of the kids who it only ran for a short like a while before it was cancelled um, and it's kind of sad to think of the kids who would have been watching that and thinking of where they are now on, on both sides when you're thinking about the innocence of children with regards of what's going on at the moment in Palestine and yeah it's just something that is was quite 
heart-wrenching at times to read when you're just reflecting on what is actually going on at the moment. What I what I do think with this one is I, I did like this one but it was very very short and I think that Daub, he has a really interesting story himself in terms of the type of career he's had within journalism and I feel like this would have been a really really good kind of middle section or like a bigger section in a book that like was about his entire career and about his all the different things that he has done and has has happened to him in this book he does get incarcerated for a while he does get taken um by authorities for different things that he is saying and we see how that affects him and his family but he has um been incarcerated by like other times as well because of his journalism work and in other countries as well and I find that really interesting so I think I think if he ever does an autobiography about his his whole life or his whole career it would be really interesting and I think this book would slot really perfectly in the middle of that um so yeah that was it I just felt like it was a little bit it was a little bit short and I would have liked more. An audiobook I read at, in February was Vet at the End of the World by Jonathan Hollins and this is a about a vet who is uh, practicing on the islands of like the Archipelago, Archipelago Islands. Um, so St. Helena and Tristan de Cunha is are what some of the islands that he and the Falkland Islands um, is some of the islands that he's been working on and we're kind of following just different adventures that he's on and different kind of the people the geography um, of the land the people of the land how people live on these really rugged kind of isolated islands um, and how community works there in many ways and how veterinary work works there the type of animals some of the kind of the um, native species that have to be really protected as well and yeah just the ups and downs of veterinary life um, on these islands and how interesting it is and what a varied life it is as well and kind of such like real like really good for someone I guess who has a little bit of wanderlust which I think Jonathan does have as well so yeah I really enjoyed this one as well again I, I do always love books about animals but I particularly love books about vets because uh, at one point in my life it's what I really wanted to do Um, I do think it's very hard to read any like veterinary book and not compare it to what I would say is the holy grail of veterinary books which is James Harriet and this did had have some kind of vibes of James Harriet in the way we're learning about some of the the odd and wonderful people who live on these islands and how they all come together and how they treat the vet and bring him in and he becomes one of their own and how they look after him in many ways um but I think there was a little bit too much like there was a lot of general knowledge in this around the islands around geography um around the population of the islands and things like that where I would have liked like some of that but also a lot more like actual animal stories and like I felt like there wasn't enough animal stories in it for me in comparison to everything else and then also some of the animal stories in it were just like super fucking depressing and I'm like if I'm reading a like book about a vet and about animals I'd like some more heartwarming stories just to make those heartbreaking stories um, or like the more like depressing stories just like that little bit easier so yeah that's just like some of my feelings I had about it so I gave it like a three three and a half out of five stars I did enjoy it but it wasn't like my favorite veterinary book um, of all time which obviously is going to be James Harriet so um, it doesn't stand up to James Harriet but if you like James Harriet you will probably enjoy to some to some point at uh, this book. I continued on with the Will Trent series with Unseen by Karen Slaughter. This, this is the seventh book in the Will Trent series and for this for me for the, this one was a little bit of one of those like filler books which you're always going to have in a very long series and I feel like this book was there just to act as a um kind of little bit of a pro progression with the relationship that we're following with, with Will Trent's relationship and um, with a woman in this book and so this this that's what this book was there for. It was there to give him like um, a chance to kind of step up a little bit to admit how he was feeling and for that relationship to take a step up for what I think is going to be a really big uh next book I think book number eight from the, the synopsis I've read is going to be a very big book for Will Trent in his life both his personal and his working life so um I think this book was there just to you know fill the gap in a little bit we're following him as he is looking into uh, an attempted murder of a policeman um and his wife uh in this area and he is kind of undercover and his undercover is increasingly becoming extremely dangerous with the type of crim criminals that he is having to come up against the kind of unknowns and the the violence that um is happening around him and the fact that if he does get caught like really really bad things can happen to him by really really bad people who are not afraid of really hurting um the people uh I thought that the conclusion to this in terms of who was the big bad guy was a little bit obvious um in a way that I was like really like that's who it's going to be like I feel like 
that was a little bit too easy uh, in many ways but again as I said um I just enjoy these books I think they're really fast paced they're very fun and I always enjoy them so this was like a solid four out of five stars and then after that I listened to another audiobook and this is a book that I have heard so much about in the last few years and when I first was hearing about it I was really kind of hesitant to read it I didn't think I would get anything out of this book and that was oh my god what a complete ashling by Sarah Breen and Emer McLeisett which is a very very popular book in Ireland and it is very very specifically Irish um, if you're if I was to talk about it very specific Irish books where I think that if you are not Irish or you are not familiar with Irish culture particularly city culture versus country culture in Ireland I just think that you would get like nothing really out of this book or you would find it very hard to understand in 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 some points um some of the significances of the book uh, like what is happening in the book for the character and I felt for a long time that I wasn't going to get anything out of this book because the main character in this book Ashling is a young woman she is 29 she grew up in uh, in the country in a small town called Ballygobbard. She lives with her parents, but she commutes uh, to Dublin for her work every day. And then she has a long term boyfriend. She's been with him like six years or something. And he lives in town and she kind of like spends a couple of nights in town with him. But he is from kind of the neighbouring village uh, to her um, in uh, next to Ballygobbard. And we're at, we're at the point with Ashling where she, you know, she's 29. She's been working in her insurance job and she's been attending a lot of weddings of like friends and family and a lot of people her age who've been with their pe like their partners a lot shorter time than her and John and she's kind of seeing people move on with their lives and she's starting to get like wondering like when is her turn when it's going to be her and John and John doesn't seem to be like they're not even living together like he doesn't seem to be any way inclined in terms of buying a ring or talking about marriage and she is starting to get impatient and we're kind of seeing how that kind of comes to a head and Ashling has to make a decision and she kind of changes a lot of her life because of that she ends up moving to Dublin and kind of getting some new friends in Dublin as well and starting to get some like new experiences while living in Dublin and having kind of different friends to the ones that she has grown up with and has known her entire life and this is very like this kind of this book from what I remember stemmed from like a Facebook group that was kind of around the typical country girl who's commuting to Dublin and she they all have their, their like very particular characteristics and kind of all do the same thing and it was like oh my god what a complete Ashling like she's such an Ashling and I think it's very apt so that's why I didn't think that I would get anything out of it because I am like born and bred in Dublin I um yeah I bit like you know I don't really have that country like thing of being able to resonate with Ashling in many ways but in many of her experiences you do just like you can relate in terms of just like family and friends and ups and downs and things like that where like it's not necessarily related to whether you're from the country or from the city I thought this was very funny um Ashling in many ways is like as I said she is relatable but I did find her extremely naive and annoying at times but it did surprise me how much I did enjoy this and just her pure entertainment values and I liked listening to it on audiobook I think there were some parts of it that were very emotional though I I feel like it's very clear at the start of the book what is going to happen um with certain with certain other characters it's very obvious that things are going to happen with that and um, so you can kind of prepare yourself a little bit for it I the ending of this was like was fine I just I didn't really I wasn't really happy with where Ashing ended up in the end because I feel like she didn't really address some of the issues she had with another person and she was taking steps forward with that person where I was like but you haven't even solved like your issues um that like kind of caused so many things to begin with like why are you continuing when you haven't even had a conversation and it kind of felt a little bit like annoying and you can kind of feel like it's probably going to go back to square one and um, by the next book maybe so I'm looking forward to reading the next book I'll probably listen to it on audiobook as well I have it reserved in the library so I'm just waiting for it to come through um and yeah uh, like it was enjoyable it was fun it was I gave it a four out of five stars um but yeah I, I don't know if I would be friends with Ashley because I found her extremely annoying <laughs> next book I read was actually a fiscal book and and that was Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. And this one is one that I really, really enjoyed. This one are following a woman called Kaiko. Who, she's living in Japan and she has been working in the same convenience store for the last like, her? No, 18 years, I think it is. Um, yeah, 18 years. And she's very happy in this store. She has always had kind of problems uh like understanding people socially and why people do the, the things that they do. And in terms of like interacting, reacting, um 
knowing what to do and what not to do she has a lot of trouble with that so she uses the convenience store in terms of the customers she's seeing but also the people she's working with she uses them as examples um of what she should do or not do or wear or not wear or act um in certain situations so she finds it a very good like tool or like support for herself in terms of going through her life because she's always been told from the, from the time she was younger that she was not normal that there was something wrong with her and her parents and her sister always worried a lot about her um growing up and she thinks that she's like in a very good place she's kind of happy like doing her like going into her convenience store every day doing her shift um she knows what to do and she knows this is what she's good at and then people start kind of questioning her like not her like her drive in life and the fact that she has stayed in this convenience store which would be kind of like I guess a low low level job for 18 years and she doesn't seem to want to do anything else and as well she doesn't seem to be pursuing any like romantic relationships and it kind of makes her start thinking that maybe she has to start doing different things to like appease the people around her even though it's not necessarily what she wants to do and we see her kind of start taking steps to changing things even though in the long run it probably won't make her like won't make her happy where like she's perfectly happy the way she is right now in the book at, at the start of the book but I found her journey just really really interesting I thought Kaiko is a character Kiko Kaiko I'm not sure if I'm saying that right um I thought her she her as a character she was so interesting to follow and there were times where you're like like just like she is grand being like doing what she wants to do like just let her be and then there were other times that like you were like she's just like you know not like not necessarily built like anyone else but she just doesn't have this like you know she doesn't have these like social norms or she doesn't she isn't uh bowing down to like social to society as much as other people in terms of getting married having children getting particular jobs this that and the other um and I love that but then there were also times where she would say or do something or like think something that was really alarming that you were just like oh god okay like you can kind of see where her parents and her sister would worry about her the fact that she's even like thinking something like that and like wondering about it you're like oh god okay that's that's slightly worrying and so yeah this was just really fun it's really really short but I had a really good time reading this and I can see myself really really getting in the future um, and getting even more out of it so yeah um, really enjoyed this and looking forward to more uh, reading more by Sayaka Murata so I gave this one a really strong like four and a half five out of five stars and then I listened to another short audiobook and that was called Brown Girls and this one was absolutely beautiful I really recommend people uh, read this but I particularly would recommend people listen to this in audiobook because I feel like this was written to be like listened to an audiobook it's it's in a lot of like kind of like not an essay format but or like spoken word poetry it's not spoken word poetry but it kind of like feels like spoken word poetry because th th it's so lyrical and beautiful and like reflective uh, the writing in this in this we are following kind of a, a we and us narrative and we're following basically a group of brown girls who are growing up in New York and we're learning all about their experiences from their childhood and their families as well and like we're like kind of growing up with them their friendships their their schooling um what they decide to do if they decide to leave New York and do other things or if they stay behind in New York if they go to college if they don't go to college uh if they have families if they don't have families if they live long lives if they live short lives and we're just following all of that um with this us we narrative and it is so beautiful and so impactful and it is one that when I I li re listen to this in two two sittings which is basically two dog walks and uh the first the first sitting I was like okay like this is this is nice it might be like a three out of five stars and um, like I'm, I'm enjoying it but I'm not loving it I don't know and then the second half the like the second uh like when I finished it it just like completely bumped up to a five stars I just was like so enthralled by the way the story was being told the experiences we were being told about and I was like if I and obviously I am not the demographic for this book this is but this is a book I think it's like a YA book but there are some like adult themes in it um so I don't really know what I actually don't know what genre this would fall in in terms of age bracket whether it's young adult or adult but I think like for older YA and adult women I think this would like for those who are seeing themselves reflected in the pages and in the character's experience I think this could be such a powerful um feeling book for so many people and could make people just like really yeah just feel really really seen and for that I think it's a really really good and really important book but obviously I can't say that from experience but yeah I just thought it was so so beautiful and it really just stuck with me and I ended up giving it a five stars so I would really really recommend people check this out and um, I just thought it was so beautifully written so unique I haven't really read anything 
that is told in this way before so I would definitely be reading more from this author and checking out whatever she does next because I thought this was absolutely brilliant. Then I started a romance series that it was Mile High by Liz Tom Ford and this is the first book in her Windy City series which I think follows just a bunch of people in Chicago um, and in this one we are following a hockey star called Zayden who meets his new air hostess Stevie so his hockey team are basically using the same plane and the same like um team every time they go for an away game so him and Stevie are going to be seeing each other a lot and there's definitely like an instant chemistry between the two of them they're both very attracted to each other but they kind of hit it off in the wrong foot and it takes a while for the spikiness between them to kind of flare down and become a lot more like I guess sexually charged um but the two of them have different reasons why they don't want to be in a relationship um or don't want like can't or don't want to be in a relationship and we're kind of seeing them tiptoe around each other a little bit eventually kind of maybe saying oh well maybe we can have some fun but this doesn't have to be a relationship this, this, this doesn't have to be serious and they're kind of starting to think about it in that way and we're obviously seeing that romance and story play out this was fine um I've heard a lot of really good things about this series but in particular about the second book which actually follows Stevie's brother and one of her best friends so I'm really looking forward to reading the second book which I'll probably pick up in April. This one I think was fine for me I didn't love Zayden from the start in terms of a male character character or a male hero I thought he was very macho really like full of himself he had these things of like how he had like lists of women on his phone for every city they go in because he knows who would be good to like hook up with and he has reasons why they'd be why they're like good in bed or like why he likes them and I just thought that was so gross and like so disgusting and yeah I just really really didn't like that and I didn't like some of the way like his just arrogance and the way he just was like well every woman wants to sleep with me like obviously like look at me like every woman wants me and it's like no they don't like shut up um so yeah I just kind of felt like that with him he he was just a little bit like gross in some ways I did like Stevie Um, we see her dealing with a lot of kind of body confidence issues because she's a bigger girl and in particular we see we, we see instances of toxic parental relationships in both for both Zayden and for Stevie with their parents and I did like the res representation of that in this book and the fact that like you don't have to be best friends with your mom you don't have to you know have a relationship with your mother if you don't want to and I think um it's more I think it's important to show that in books because I think people feel like they have to have these amazing relationships with their parents and it's like you really don't the same with Stevie's kind of journey with body positivity how she feels about herself but I did think too much of that was kind of ended up kind of being attached to Zayden's like you know interest in her and the fact that like she she finally felt beautiful because a man f thought her beautiful as well you know the kind of way I, I don't always like that I kind of would have liked her to have come into it a little bit more on her own she does volunteer in a dog shelter which I liked so I liked the the like the dog element um, of this book and then one of the things that's really annoyed annoyed me in this book is that Satan does talk about his mental health a lot he does talk about like anxiety issues that he has and the fact that he's seen the ther therapist for like five years or something like five or six years but he's really really aware of his problems like he he knows all the reasons why he is the way he is and he, but he doesn't do anything to actually like help himself like get any better he's like oh well I'm like this because of this and it's like yeah but then you're just going to stay that way instead of knowing exactly why you're like that and trying to tackle that issue and um, like surely that's what you should be doing in therapy and it's like it's just it, it just really annoyed me I was like how can someone be so self-aware yet not actually be do anything about it um so that just kind of annoyed me so I gave this a three out of five stars it was fine it just wasn't my favorite romance book but I have high hopes for the next then I re-listened to The Martian by Andy Weir I think this is either the second or the third time I have read this book my first time reading this book was it was a four star probably very close to a five star this time I actually bumped it down to a three three and a half um, out of five stars and I think it's because I listened to it on audiobook so if people don't know what the Martian is about we are following an astronaut called Mark Watney who is on a Mars mission um and very like early on in the in the mission um there's a big storm they are supposed to evacuate and he ends up getting separated from his team and they leave him behind they think that he has died during the storm but he ends up not dying and he ends up being alone on Mars and trying to figure out how to survive on Mars uh with very little um, with the skills that he has with engineering and kind of botany skills that he has to try and figure out how to survive before he can be rescued or the next mission is on Mars so we see him through that through like travel diary or through um like update diaries and he's a really like fun loving funny character and 
I did like that this time around. He is a lovely character to follow. He is very funny. But for me, this time around, I think because I was li listening to it in audiobook, the science parts in this book that are very, very heavy, I really struggled with them in audiobook. Um, I'm not a huge like sciencey person um in terms of actually understanding all of it in terms of, especially when it comes to like engineering and chemistry and stuff like that um it wouldn't be something that I'm super interested in anymore so I think I find it easier to read those bits rather than listen to them so when I was listening to them I was finding that I was really kind of like I don't know and I don't care like it I, I kind of noticed it going on a lot more or there being so much more of it than I remembered when I physically read it um so that kind of dampened my dampened my my enjoyment of the book um overall so uh so yeah there was that unfortunately so I did enjoy it but it wasn't as successful a reread as I wanted initially then I picked up a, a fantasy book this is the first book in the Theddard Citadel trilogy this is a book that's been on my TBR but TBR card for like three years I think and I'm so upset that I didn't read it sooner because I really really enjoy this one this is Maps Edge by David Hare and in this one we are following a character called Wraith Vire who is a magician or a sorcerer and at the very start of the book we find him discovering that there is this kind of property um like a like a kind of like a crystally type of sub substance um that has been found in this kind of area where there's not a lot of habitation but this substance can basically uh, make magic a lot stronger and because of that when it's mined it can be sold for like huge amounts of money so it can be really it can make someone someone very very wealthy so he is living in this town that he fled to after a failed uprising in his own in his own country and the city or the town that he is living in is basically like made up of rebels and uh, outlaws and pretty much the whole town kind of decides to to join him on his quest and they travel across to where this uh Istariel, where this like new substance is so they can all they can kind of create a new community and start farming and mining it and like become you know wealthier than they have been in this other town so we we follow them on this journey but at the same time Wraith and like the town are being uh, pursued by these Mulgravian soldiers who Mulgravia is like this empire that is has kind of like take kind of colonized a lot of this world um and it kind of takes control of everything they're very very powerful sorcerers and if you end up on the wrong side of these guys you pretty much end will always end up dead um so they're being pursued by these guys so we are following this journey and i just really enjoyed this i thought the way the magic system and the world building was done was really really good and i really love that we're seeing different types of magic so the type of magic that wraith has is quite organized um he he obviously knows it very well uh he's very good at it and the type of magic as well you kind of get this like spirit demon that reminded me of um the uh philip pullman books um, and the the spirit demons to kind of generally take the form of your favorite animal so uh so i liked that part i just thought that was fun but we're also seeing a different type of magic which would be more i guess aligned to like a chaos type of magic or a much messier scary type of magic that is very hard to control um with another character and we're seeing how that type of magic works and how people are very scared of that magic and how they normally like will kind of like exercise that type of magic from people um, and we're seeing how that works and how it probably isn't as like it can be controlled in a way that people never knew before so we're kind of seeing how that all works which I thought was really interesting and um, I really love the female characters in this book I thought they were varied uh, and in like intelligent and strong and yeah other than Wraith's daughter Zar who's like 16 and she's just a teenager so she's just kind of annoying but I thought the other female characters that were following um were really interesting and I really liked them. The only thing I will say, this probably would have been a five star for me if it didn't have so much kind of threats of sexual assault. So we're on this journey and there are like very different types of people um like like traveling and there are just a certain like there were certain soldiers and stuff who and there was one person in particular who was like specifically targeting one of the characters that we're mainly following and he was just like he was just intent on basically raping her and it was horrible and I was just like I feel like we don't need this anymore in these books like we just like we just don't have to have it like I don't really understand this need to constantly have like these sexual assaults in these kind of books like it would have been a perfectly like fine book it would have been so much more enjoyable for me to read I guess as a woman if if like we weren't having these threats of sexual assault it was just and the fact that it just happened it happened several times and then even when that wasn't happening 
we would have maybe some kind of side conversations or conversations with other characters like kind of background characters and they'd be talking about a female character and they would be talking about her in a really like misogynistic demeaning way even though this character has proven herself to be really strong really intelligent really gifted yet they're talking about her as in being kind of like oh yeah I'll give her one you know that kind of way and it's just like gross and I'm like I just really hated that so um unfortunately that was kind of my main issue with this book um but I really really liked it other than that I gave it a four out of five stars and I'm really really looking forward to reading the next book in this series and I read Terry Pratchett's Pyramids which is the next book I have had to read in the Terry Pratchett Discworld series um it's been a few years since I read uh one of them and I kind of I think I saw a few other people has have been reading the Discworld and it kind of reminded me that I wanted to continue on with my Discworld journey so I have been doing that um and I read Pyramids and it was very fun we're following a character called Tepic who leaves his country where he's basically like a prince but he goes to in a school to learn to be an assassin because he doesn't really know what else he wants to do so he's like cool I'll like go to this school and I'll learn to be assassin and maybe I'll die along the way but maybe I won't and maybe I will graduate and become an assassin um so we see him do that but then just as he graduates his father dies and he ends up having to go back and become the king in this city um, that he that he has grown up in which is very backward in many ways and we start realizing why that is and like all sorts of weird things happen if you know Terry Pratchett at all you know that it is weird and wonderful in many ways and you kind of just have to go along with it you don't have to think you, you you don't think too hard about what is happening in a Terry Pratchett novel because if you do uh, you probably won't like it you just have to accept all the weird and wonderful things that are happening so that's what I did and I very much enjoyed it this so this was like three and a half four to five stars for me um yeah I enjoyed it I had fun uh, it was weird it was wonderful don't ask me what like what really happened in it because to be honest I don't really know but I still had a good time then the second last book I want to talk about is the one of the ones I, I finished at the very start of March and that is Maud Horton's Glorious Revenge by Lizzie Pook and this one has such a good cover and such a good premise. We are following a character called Maud Horton who is out for revenge after his sister dies on an Arctic exploration during the, in the 1800s and we are at a time where public hangings were like a really big thing um, in the UK and it was like a really big spectacle it was like entertainment for people and we're kind of seeing this at that time and Maud Horton decides that she is going to take revenge on the person that she believes responsible for her sister's death um, and we see her go out to do that she is a chemist so she has a very good understanding of like tinctures and medicines and stuff like that so when you're reading that you're kind of saying okay and you've seen the cover of the book you're like okay so like she's probably going to be like really cool a bit like poisoning and like doing things like this is going to be really interesting and if you're going to give me a premise of a book that is about a sister taking revenge for the death of of her beloved like a woman taking revenge for the death of her beloved sister I want something thrilling I want something fun I want something dark and gritty and exciting and I feel like I just didn't get any of that this was really really disappointing it was very flat, very lacklustre. We get Maud's POV, but then we also, and then we get the letters from her sister or like diary entries from her sister on this Arctic exploration. So we kind of find out what was happening during that that could have caused her death. Um, and then, but then we also get the POV of uh, a man called Edison Stowe, who is the man responsible for her sister's death. And I just feel like we didn't, I don't know if we really needed his POV because I felt like we ended up, we ended up, like being a lot closer as readers to him than we were to Maud because I felt like her her point of views were so distant and I feel like we didn't really get to know her at all and then in terms of her revenge I feel like it wasn't really her revenge in the end and it was very like disappointing it felt very rushed at the end as well and for like someone who like obviously she's a chemist I thought that would end up being like a really big part like of the story of like of how she was going to get her revenge on this guy and it really like didn't it just wasn't anything at all really and I just felt really disappointed in this book I just I was expect I just thought it was going to be really good and it just ended up being so so disappointing I gave it a three out of five stars but honestly it could be more of like a 2.5 the more I think about it the more annoyed I am that it just didn't deliver anything that it promised and this is the second time I have read a Lizzie Pook book that has done the same thing she she manages to get these gorgeous covers she has these really amazing premises and then the book itself the story itself and the characters themselves end up being really really flat and really disappointing so that's happened to me two times with her so I don't know whether it's like her writing whether it's me not like under like getting what she's trying to do I don't know but what I will say is she's really good at doing like historical setting and atmosphere and stuff like that so she does really she does do well with that she obviously does put a lot of thought and study 
um into the time period that she's writing about but in terms of delivering a very exciting like exciting story it's just not that at all so yeah this was just really disappointing for me um so yeah I'd love to know if you've read this if what do you think of it because for me it was just a complete dud then the last book I want to talk about is The Woman They Could Not Silence by Kate Moore this is a non-fiction book that I listened to on audiobook and Kate Moore uh, wrote one of my favorite non-fiction books of all time which is The Radium Girls and this one is very like is also extremely extremely good now not I don't like it as much as the radium girls but I also still really really enjoyed it and I also really enjoyed it on uh, audiobook for like a longer non-fiction book um I sometimes find like I avoid those in audiobook because I'm like maybe I would I will like understand everything better reading it physically rather than listening to it but, but the way this was written it was very similar to the radium girls where you kind of feel like you are it's almost like a non-fiction fictiony type of writing if that if, if that makes sense um we are following a character called elizabeth packard who in the 1840s was shipped off to an insane insane asylum by her husband basically because she had her own opinions and her own she was very very smart and she started saying things around the church and around her own kind of religious uh not necessary beliefs but the way she thought like the church should be thinking about certain things um which was her in her own right to be able to say and do but her husband basically got afraid of her and shut her away because uh he was afraid of her intellect and he was afraid of what that intellect would do would do to him in terms of his job or people following him so he ends up putting her away for like three years um, in an insane asylum and for those three years she is constantly trying to like you know convince everyone in the insane asylum that she's not insane that she's completely you know she's completely like mentally like capable and she's also seeing other women who are in the same boat as her people who whose like male family members or husbands had put them in to the asylum for like reasons like jealousy or uh being like reading too much like there was a girl who was in this in an asylum for reading too much um which so yeah like that that's something um and we're seeing yeah the struggle of like this like horrible thing that happened to so many women for basically being smart and even the women who maybe did have mental illness and how badly they were treated and how the practices in insane asylums at the time did nothing to actually help those who were genuinely ill um the the really horrible things that were happening to them and elizabeth packard is in a type of ward where like well-to-do women are so like in terms of many things she's treated really really well um like if she was a woman who of like much poorer uh, demographic like she wouldn't have half the things that she did have but yet she was still like locked away she still had her her freedom and her future taken away from her when she was in this insane asylum but we see her constantly work to try and get out and we see how that all like ends up but then once she does get out how she fight, still fights for her own kind of emancipation from her husband um and fights for her children and her family who've been taken away from her and then also she fights for all the other women who were in the insane asylums and tries to fight fight for better um better care but also better procedures in terms of like putting these women in these asylums and uh how how like the right who who is able to like take them out and stuff as well um so yeah, this was just really interesting. I thought Elizabeth Packard as a woman was just fascinating to read about. She is just an ama- like was an amazing woman to read about. Extremely clever, extremely uh like passionate and like empathetic um towards other women. And yeah, it was just it was just an amazing story. It is one of those stories that kind of makes you hate men because the men in it are so bad and like such trash. And um, it also kind of makes you mad about how women historically have been treated uh, for their intellect or for being outspoken or like intelligent um but also there was like a note at the end of this that kind of made the point of even though like you know something like what happened to Elizabeth Packard might not necessarily happen today there are still so many ways in which women are constantly being put down when they are angry or passionate or outspoken about things how they're told that they're crazy or they're mad or there must be hormonal or on their period or things like that and I don't know any other any woman in the world who hasn't at some point probably experienced something like that when your emotions or your feelings are disregarded by men uh for a number of those reasons um and how you're you're told you're mad or you're crazy and like yeah so it really made me think um that like about that um but I gave this a five out of five stars I really enjoyed it really got an audiobook it's narrated by Kate Moore as well um, and she does a really really good job so I would highly recommend it um for people who are looking to read a good non-fiction 
So those are all the books that I read in February. Please let me know what you guys think down below and how you've read any of these books. What was your favourite book in February? I would love to know. And I will see you guys again next time. Bye!